Salutations everybody, it's Captain Starry and I'm back with a yearly update and monthly favorites video wrapped in one. I believe the last time I did a yearly update was 2019 and the last video I uploaded was my Aunt Space Work Space Tour. Um, so yeah, it's been a while and uh, quite a few things have happened since those last two videos and I'm kind of a little late to the game when it comes to being back online. I will say I have been online, uh, every now and then I'll scurry out with my little cockroach hands and post somewhere on Twitter or Instagram, or I'll be streaming on Twitch, but not as consistently as I would have liked, and I actually haven't produced as much as I would have liked. Uh, i kind of been on a five month hiatus, I'll come back every now and then, but I'm never fully, like, present. So I feel like May um, was a very good time for me to come back because I'm finally cognizantly back into um, creating stuff again. And I just wanted to get back on YouTube because I genuinely like making videos and I kind of just want to have these snippets of my life online. So with that said, I've had quite a few life changes. I moved out. I have a nephew, I, I I got a new job, and it's been pretty crazy. Um, when I tell you, with my entire being, I did not picture moving out at the age of 23. I wasn't picturing moving out until I was like 35, if that. That was me being nice to myself. I, I am being completely 100% honest. I was not expecting to move out in my 20s at all. And it's not just like, Oh, I'm living in a shoebox of an apartment. No, I have a decent space. It's a house that I'm sharing with my roommates and my boyfriend. And it's a good life change, but it's a life change. And it was a very boggling. It's still boggling to me because although I have this nice house, it's not a home yet. I've moved very frequently in my life. And, I, and every time I moved, I've been with my family. But this time moving, I'm not with my family, and it doesn't feel like a home quite yet. I think back to my project for the rest of the year, trying to make this house a home, but it's still very uprooting for me. I also recently left a toxic workplace environment. I say recently, but this happened like last year or two years ago. I don't even, what is time? And I finally have a job that is, um, a little bit less demanding and I have some like a schedule that works around like my life schedule I don't really take work home with me and it's just an overall better um, vibe for me um, in terms of my mental health as well I am an aunt now I have a nephew I have a healthy baby boy for a nephew and uh, it's been a little weird because I just wasn't expecting to become an aunt, especially at this stage of my life. So it's been a blessing for my family. I know my mom's really excited to be a grandma now and I've been learning to grapple with it because if you know me, kids aren't my favorite. <laughs> so yeah, I've, um, it's, and everything I've just listed are good life changes. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate them. I'm very thankful for them, but I, it's just, it's still change and change is always gonna be hard. All right, so now I'm back and I kind of have a different way of how I want to approach everything I'm doing online. Cause during my hiatus, I was just so frustrated because I was trying to put myself into this box with what I felt like I needed to do or what I thought I needed to do. But when you put yourself in a box, you're kind of just not really being yourself. And I'm very particular with how I present myself online, mostly for my safety because I, I, I'm a woman on the internet. But also because it's just like, I have a lot of people in my ear telling me what I need to do. And sometimes I need to just take a step back and not listen to any of them. I do cherish uh, the advice I get from friends and well-meaning um, people, but sometimes it's just like at the end of the day, I want to make stuff that I like having fun watching. I like watching my little Monterey vlog. I like watching my camping vlog. Sometimes I sit down and watch my speed paints because it's like, I made that. I make stuff. And you know, it's just, for a while, like things just bled into every aspect of what I was creating. 
Um, like, I don't, I stopped drawing fan art a long time ago because I just didn't have fun drawing fan art because I always felt like I needed to keep up with every new show, new anime, new next best thing that came out. And I kind of just didn't know what drawing to make me happy was anymore. So that type of thing happened again with the stuff I was creating when it came to like picking games to stream on Twitch or when it came to what I would make in a YouTube video or what I'm doing for a TikTok. And I kind of just don't want to do any of that. I feel like people are very multifaceted. There's no two sides of a coin. We're like all like 20 sided die and we all have different things that we like. For me, for example, it's like, I don't just like pop music. I like 80s, I like rock, I like emo music. I like country music. And those are all me. And the things I like watching, I like horror. I love horror, but I also like Disney cartoons and I love animation. and. I love so many different things and I just I just want to do what I want essentially that, that's all I'm trying to say I want to do what I want I'm gonna do what I want because I just want this channel to be me looking back on like different phases I had in my life different things I was into in my life that's what I want when it comes to me being online whether it be, be like oh I want to stream um, the, the goose game on Twitch or I want to do a monthly favorites, then I want to do a sketchbook tour, and then I want to do a Let's Play series on my YouTube channel. That's the type of chaos I want. <laughs> I've also been trying new things creatively. I canceled my previous webcomic because I just feel like I jumped into it too fast. I got what I wanted out of it, essentially. I wanted to see if I could produce something like that, if I was capable of it, and I feel like I am. But I want to reboot it and do the writing first because I want to tell a story. And writing is not my forte. I'm an artist, not a writer. I definitely have ideas. I have world building stuff, but I never really sat down and typed up a book. I've, wrote, I've written essays. Essays are easy because you could just beef it up with quotations and explain and explain. But like when it comes to writing from my mind, I don't know what I'm doing. So it's been a bit of a hurdle, but I'm learning how to do it as I go. I've been getting a lot of advice from my writer friends and it's just been a different experience because when it comes to drawing, I can go from sketching to line art to flat color to rendering, but it's hard to figure out that process when it comes to writing. And then it's also hard because it's like, I have a sketchbook where I do different things to practice every day because it's like, even though I can draw this piece, I have to also practice doing anatomy and color theory. I don't know what to do when it comes to practicing for writing. I don't exactly have a sketchbook for writing. Like, I guess that would be a journal, but then it's just like, do I just write different short stories and then have my main story? It's just, it's been a weird to figure it out, but I'm enjoying the journey. And I wanna get as much pre-production done for my comic, even though I'm very impatient, very frustrated. I wanna draw it now. I wanna share everything now. It's been a journey and I'm enjoying it. But yeah, getting back into the swing of things has been weird. I'm not as motivated or as driven as I was before, which was another hard thing to come to terms to because I was, I still think I'm very ambitious, don't get me wrong, but I was a very highly motivated, borderline workaholic when it came to my art, when it came to streaming and YouTubing and all of that stuff. But now I'm a little bit more relaxed when approaching it. I'm kind of just more like, it's good enough, let's put it online. Um, but I also have the duality of, I'm embarrassed of everything I make. I'm embarrassed of perceiving myself online. So there's also that to deal with. All of this to just say, happy 22. I'm happy to be back and um, in other words, I think another way for me to get back to being online is to let you know what I've been up to, which is my monthly favorites video. Alrighty, so I guess we'll start off with my favorite game of the month, which uh, was a little bit of a surprise for me. So 
Around the time when I was streaming on and off, I realized I needed a game to play off stream. And for a while, that game was either Minecraft or Animal Crossing. And I, don't get me wrong, I still love those games, but sometimes when you're playing them all the time, it becomes a little monotone. You get a little crazy. And I, I feel like I need a game where I just felt a little bit more mentally stimulated and I wanted to feel like I was making progress and that there was an end goal in sight. And I was uh, talking about this with my good friend Trainer John and he was like, you know, I let your boyfriend borrow Breath of the Wild. He should still have it on him. I don't mind if you want to sit down and play it for yourself because he's very big on Legend of Zelda. So of course he wants to push Legend of Zelda into my life. And you know what? I was willing to take him up on that because I've seen the gameplay for some of Breath of the Wild. I remember when the trailer dropped and everybody was fed for days on Twitter. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll check it out. I had been wanting to save it for stream, but with the way my graphics card has been acting up, I was like, you know what, let me be selfish. Let me have this game off stream and oh my gosh, I love it. I, the few games I've played in this franchise was a little bit of Twilight Princess, a little bit of Majora's Mask, which I quickly dropped out of rage, but Breath of the Wild has been breathtaking. I find myself reaching for my Switch all the time for the game and uh, it's probably uh, gonna be my favorite next month. It's very beautiful and it's very colorful and it's everything I want when it comes to like adventuring and rock climbing, especially because I've been in a bit of a fantasy kick lately. I've been watching like a lot of like The Last Unicorn, Secrets of Nim, Dark Crystal and all that. It really feels that itch in my brain and the soft storytelling when you just slowly piece together as you walk around the crumpled ruins of Hyrule, when you have in your face storytelling when you're putting Link's memories together and the sadness that comes with realizing like all your friends are gone. I'm a little late to the train, I get it. This game's been out for a few years now, but I am very glad to go in blind still. I actually just didn't know what I was getting into when I was playing this game. There have been times where like, I've teared up a bit because it's just either the land is so beautiful or the story is so beautiful or just finding out devastating things has just been heart-wrenching and it's a great game. If for some reason you haven't picked it up like me, it's worth picking it up. I also really like the shrines. Some it's honestly for me, I really love the shrines. They're easy, not gonna lie but sometimes it's just nice to know that I'm not gonna be lost in a temple for days. One of my favorite movies this month was very unexpected. I never in a million years thought I'd be seeing this. I really loved Ponyo. Ponyo is not my favorite Studio Ghibli movie. I remember being a little disappointed when I watched it for the first time, but I was in like middle school, so I was very cynical about everything. I watched it in theater for the first time. I was with my friend Bubbly Death Studio and Trainer Zhang and my little sister. And we watched it in Japanese with subtitles. And it was quite an experience. And it was the sit down I feel like I needed to have for Ponyo. I feel like I understand the movie storytelling a bit better because there's a bit more context when it came to translating it from Japanese rather than, you know, the dubbing when some things are lost in translation. Seeing the illustrations and the backgrounds and the individual strokes on, on the big screen just gave me a newfound appreciation. Even though I didn't enjoy the storytelling in Ponyo when I first watched it, I always appreciated the art. I often say it's probably one of the most visually, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's like a very, probably one of the best when it comes to Studio Ghibli's work. Um, the visuals are amazing. The animation when it comes to the water and the ocean and the creatures in it is just breathtakingly beautiful. The soundtrack's amazing. And I appreciate the storytelling a bit more. It's still a bit unpolished in my opinion, but understanding it more now, not only with me being older, but seeing it in the subtitles, I appreciate it more as a movie and it made it to my favorite because I just have this new connection with it now. 
not that big of a connection like for my other favorites like Porco Rosso or Castle in the Sky, but it, I, I don't shit on it as much. <laughs> so I couldn't pick one song for this month because I found myself bouncing between these two. The first one I found through my YouTube algorithm, it came up in my tab. I have this whole separate YouTube channel where I just listen to music, so that's all I get in my recommendations. It's This December by Ricky Montgomery, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I just find myself playing it all the time. I love how upbeat it is, but also how like the lyrics go. Um, it just feels so like such a struggle trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> I also really loved All I Ever Asked. I will throw the name of the artist up here. I don't know why I didn't write it down, but I found it through TikTok and I really enjoy it as a song. I love the vibe. I find myself humming it. It's just a very nice, catchy song and I think more people should listen to it. I have an unhealthy relationship with taking care of myself and one of the things you need to do to take care of yourself, no matter how many of us hate it, is exercising. I've been struggling to maintain exercise for the most of my 20s. Uh, as soon as I left high school, I just stopped physically taking care of myself. And I found a way to finally get around to doing it. I find different videos that I wanna try out every week. I also just try to stretch, if anything. I I think stretching is the most important and if I don't feel like I can get a workout in that day, I always make sure to stretch whether it's touching my toes, trying different yoga poses. I usually try to set aside at least 10 to 30 minutes of my time. And something that really surprised me when it came to enjoying exercises, having my roommate participate with me. She was very stubborn when it came to me making her get out of bed and come stretch with me but I feel like it's helped her as well because she has a uh, crackly bones, but um, I never really saw it as me helping her though. It was more like it helped to help me, uh, hold me accountable to staying consistent with it. And I have more energy now. I don't hurt as much. Actually, my back has this is the best it's felt in a long time and most people in their 20s will be like ah oh, my back my back hurts like i'm 85 like i i don't think my back will ever be in its prime again when i was a kid and didn't know what back pain was but i definitely find myself not like like this all the time like hunched over crying some days are hard I will say that there, there sometimes there's a week that goes by when I'm not in my best top tip shape of holding myself accountable, but I've been pretty consistent. Um, so I'm very proud of that when it comes to that. And then I, this was a almost a tie because I, when it comes to my favorite food of this month, I've been eating a lot of tilapia and rice. I still love tilapia rice, but um, something that came out of left field was spam and rice. My roommate just, she puts crack in it. I don't know. No, it's not crack. Uh, she she just, uh, she marinates the spam in like oyster sauce, sugar. I want to say soy sauce and she marinates it. Then she throws it on the pan. I don't know. She does all this stuff too and it tastes amazing. She showed me how to make it so now I can make it myself. I find myself craving it most days. So that's probably my favorite food of this month. It's a very simple meal, but I'm just a very simple girl, okay? <laughs> there are actually quite a few events that happened this month that I really uh, had a good time with. I planned a birthday party for the first time and it was just a small gathering for one of my very close friends. I We had a small guest list, we just did pizza and I made her cupcakes and I cooked and it was just an all around good time. It was just a nice little gathering and it was, it went off without a hitch for the most part. We also did a little small dinner for my little sister for her birthday and it was really nice to just be with my family. Um, like I said, now that I moved out, I'm not in my family's vicinity all the time. So I always find myself looking forward to spending time with them. And I also had a, my anniversary with my boyfriend. We've been together for about, I want to say eight years now. 
and it was a little rocky, but I feel like with this anniversary, we're just closer now than we've been in a while, and it's been very nice. And then we celebrated uh, my, again, my close friend's uh, brother graduated. So congrats to the class of 2022. I hope you guys um, have smooth sailing from here on out, but I'm not gonna lie, the, the water's gonna be rough. Some of you think you're gonna be going in a certain direction, but find out that your compass is broken and you know what, just roll with it, okay? It's okay. Nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> I still don't know what I'm doing. Um, I Oh, some honorable mentions. So uh, something that's been keeping me grounded was I got not sponsored. I got this planner from Mossery. I've used their planners before, but I kind of dropped off halfway through my last one. And when I moved out, I was just very out of my element. So when I got this planner again, it helped to ground me a bit. Um, it really helped that, like, I, I usually get the um, the undated ones, so I can just, if I feel like I, I'm gonna drop it anytime soon, I could just white it out and come back to it when I want to. I, that's what I really love about the Mossery planners. Um, another thing is, I really like that I can keep track of my habits. Honestly, keeping track, I'm not the best at doing it all the time. As you can get, if you guys, <laughs> I can't talk. As you guys can see from here, there's like a month where I just didn't check. But for the most part of, for the better part of May, I was just on this almost every day updating it. And I think it really just helped ground me in what I was doing and helped me move out of my little, um, my little swamp that I was going through. Another thing I like about it is it's a dual book book thing and I not only have this planner right here but I have this notebook where I keep track of like my thoughts and my budgeting because I'm living on my own now and stuff like that and it's just really helped me out a lot and I genuinely don't know what I would do without it. Another thing is I've been trying to read again. It's been hard these past few months. I always put it in my little habit tracker. I try, my goal is to try to do 30 minutes every day, but sometimes I just don't make time for it because I usually prioritize like exercise or eating better. But you know, keeping your mind stimulated and working out those deers that don't roll as much anymore now that you're out of school is just as important as like working the muscles but a book that i found myself picking up again was starting point it has a collection of like interviews and stuff from hayao miyazaki and it's just been a good read i haven't finished reading it i'm only on page 40 but it's a start it also helps that it's like a non-fiction book i love fiction but sometimes it's just really hard to find one that i can dive into and it's hard to like like just find something new because it's like you want everything you read to be good but sometimes you have to get through those absolute ass books but when it comes to nonfiction, it's a little easier because you don't have to suspend your disbelief for anything you don't have to um you don't have to like be like okay they're contradicting their world building thing they established in chapter one and versus chapter 29 with Nonfiction. it's just something that happened, it's a recollection of someone's memories and it's something I'm a little bit more willing to engage in. So it's been a nice book to pick up. And the last thing I want to get to today is uh, something I actually got for my anniversary. Actually two more things. So my boy, I don't want to call it an impulse purchase, but it was definitely a little out of pocket. So my boyfriend recently got into skating and he's actually stuck with it pretty well. He actually does some really cool stuff with it. He's learning to grind. He's learning to stop. He has the, the straight line roller blades, I believe, but he actually decided to treat me to my own pair of skates and I find them very lovely. It's also another way for me to be active and exercise. I. I don't make as much time for it as he does. He actually tries to do it almost every day. He'll come home from work super excited and he'll just run on out in his skates and it's just very cute. And I, <laughs> it's just a good time. Um, 
The only reason why I'm not as active as him is because we're in California and it's just been really hot. And I'm also just very afraid of falling. I have, I've only fell like maybe once or twice and it wasn't as bad as I thought, but I'm just like constantly like my mind's like, imagine the worst thing that could happen to you and the worst bodily injury that you can uh, suffer from falling and let's go. And I'm just like, I don't wanna go anymore. But I definitely um, am looking forward to the summer because despite the heat, I want to get to trying to learn some tricks. I want to learn how to skate backwards. I want to do the cool dance moves. And I want to skate with my sister because she skateboards and you know we're all going to be skating. So I think it's going to be a very fun time. But very fun summer exercise activity. And then the last thing was uh, something I got for my anniversary, actually. So I was not expecting to get this at all. This came out of left field. I will admit I'm a little mad because we said we weren't gonna get each other gifts this year. <sighs> my boyfriend got me the iPad Pro. And I just, I, I can't believe it. I kind of just stared at it for a really long time. I remember opening, seeing the box. I was like, there's gonna be like candy in this box, right? This isn't real, right? You you're, you guys are joking with me, right? I literally kept looking at my boyfriend and my roommate. I opened the box, the iPad was there. I'm like, this is the first generation iPad, right? The big booty iPad with the old Instagram logo. This isn't a real iPad Pro, right? No, it was the iPad Pro and my, uh, he even got me the Apple Pencil, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll link all the script to my, where I got my case and my screen protector, but, uh, it's just been a amazing experience. I have been, I have been researching what I wanted to get for a long time because I, for a while before moving out, I wanted something I could take drawing on the go because sometimes my family would all be in the room and I'd be kind of glued to my desk be drawing or working on stuff. And I wanted something a little bit more mobile because sometimes it's like, I wanna go just get coffee with friends and draw, but I don't necessarily wanna bring a sketchbook and draw. I wanna work on my comic or I want to make thumbnails or edit photos, but also be in the company of someone or be able to just, go sit on my couch or play with my cats or just blaze around in bed. I don't necessarily want to be at a desk all the time. So this has definitely been everything I had hoped for. I was really like weighing between a Windows Surface Pro and the iPad. I ultimately went with the iPad because even though I had done a lot of research with the Windows Surface Pro, I never really saw how it would work for someone like me who draws. If that makes sense, I don't know. Every time I watched reviews for it, it was also it was always from the perspective of someone who was very into the tech field. They're always talking about like the the business aspect rather than like how it would be for like an artist or a graphic designer. If that makes sense. But whenever I see people talking about iPads, it's always like artists I follow. It's always like animators and just people that do stuff that I like to do. So this is what I went for. This is my first time using like the iOS system. This is my first time having an i anything, an Apple product. I am very anti-Apple, not going to lie, but this has uh, buttered my biscuits. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, it has definitely put a, a cork in me because I just am in love with this. I've been taking it everywhere. My roommates have been making fun of me, calling me an iPad kid, and they're not wrong. Um, sometimes when I'm in call with my friends at Discord, on my desk, I'll just be on my iPad playing in Procreate. I've been watching a lot of tutorials. I've been looking up what apps to get. And um, I think I'll be making a video sometime soon on how I utilize it with my content creation process. I actually uh, took notes in Procreate for this video with what I wanted to talk about, the things I really liked this month, and it's just come in handy a lot. But yeah, I think that's gonna be about it. I'm glad to be back. It's, um, I'm looking forward to editing this video, to be honest, because I really like editing my little life update videos more more often than like something a little bit more polished. I just really like making it aesthetic. Um, some things I want to try to do next month, uh, this is gonna be a little embarrassing, but 
I want to get my driver's license. I'm 23 years old. I don't have my driver's license. I really want to get it. Gas prices being what they are, maybe I shouldn't, but I just want that independence really bad. I also want to travel a bit. Um, because I'm living on my own now, I don't think I'll be able to do that as much because traveling does require a bit of money. But it's just something I would like to do. If Even if I could just do like little day trips, I think I'd be content because the pandemic, I've just been wanting to go experience life outside of my home. So yeah, as the kids say, I just need to go out and touch grass. And the last thing I want to try to do with this uh, month of June is I want to do my eight hour stream. We hit 100 followers during the five months I've been on and off of Twitch and it has been phenomenal. By the way, I'd love to thank my dear friend Chibi Rabbit. She's the one that helped to get me to 100 with her raid and I appreciate it so much. So I promised an eight hour stream when it happened, but that was a little less than half a year ago. I haven't gotten around to doing it because I've just been so inconsistent. I wanted to do it on a time when I was coming back to being consistent. So when I did the eight hour stream, there was more to look forward to. I'm planning to take some, like maybe two days off to get that um, situated because I need to plan like meal breaks and what I'm gonna be doing for eight hours, but be sure to look forward to it. I think I'll be doing it for the bitter end of June. So yeah, make sure to follow me on social media. But with that, I would like to bid farewell, stay safe and stay healthy as always. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.